You know, when they asked me to uh, present an award to Phil Rosenthal, my first thought was, of course, Ray's not available. <laughs> and then my second thought was, neither is Doris. <laughs> and my third was, why did Peter have to die? <laughs> An award for Phil Rosenthal. Why, did he finally syndicate in Yemen? <laughs> doesn't he have enough, really? I mean, apparently the WGA doesn't think so, so let's take a look at his credits, his illustrious career. Phil joined the Writers Guild in 1990 on a sitcom for that hilarious comedy star, Robert Mitchum. He was just a writer on it, so you really can't blame Phil that someone at the network saw Cape Fear and said, wow, this guy's a riot. <laughs> then Phil went uh, to work on a show called Baby Talk, where the baby sounded like Tony Danza, or the baby was Tony Danza. I really don't know. Tony's tiny. Again. That was a time when ideas were cheap and blow was cheaper. <laughs> then he did Coach, which makes me come to the question, why didn't they ask Craig T. Nelson to do this? Well, they did, and he wasn't available. <laughs> of course, we all know about Everybody Loves Raymond. It was a show that took an obscure but extremely talented comedian and gave him a huge break alongside Ray Romano. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to Andy Kindler. He's probably in Montreal waiting to go on. But this award, it's not for Phil's writing. It's for his wonderful, or for the wonderful lines and lives that he gave all of us, but it's for his humanitarian efforts. What can you say about a guy whose company is called Where's Lunch, other than must be a Jew? Note that he didn't call the company, where's the check? <laughs> and release. <laughs> Phil actually is a tremendously generous guy. I know because once, as a wrap gift, he gave me a, a water bottle. That's class. Tonight, Phil is receiving the Valentine Davies Award. Valentine Davies was a writer, of course, who won an Oscar for Miracle on 34th Street. So right away, you, you see the similarities. <laughs> the award recognizes humanitarian efforts on behalf of writers, and I could say that in all honesty, Phil has used his great success to give back to the community, in particular, helping at-risk students. He's also helped at-risk actors, but that's another story. Phil and his lovely wife, Monica Haran, who was my wife, Amy, on the show, yes, are, are major patrons of Inner City Arts. They helped actually build a state-of-the-art theater soundstage for the organization and have no doubt taught at-risk youth about the power of nepotism. <laughs> Phil's incredible foundation not only funds a diversity program at Hofstra University, which is Phil's alma mater, but it awards student scholarships for comedy writing and performance. The Rosenthal Foundation is also heavily involved in cancer research, which is something very close to my heart. So, for his service that has brought dignity and honor to writers everywhere, it is truly a pleasure for me to present the 2013 Valentine Davies Award to my friend, one of the funniest men I've ever met, and a true mensch, Mr. Phil Rosenthal. Very nice. Brad Garrett, my favorite oversized Hebrew. <laughs> I've been telling people I'm going to the Writers Award this week. Yeah, and they're giving out a few special awards to Tom Stoppard, Tony Kushner, and me.
I haven't exactly advertised that the writing of mine that's being honored tonight is for a series of checks. <laughs> I can't even take credit for that either, really. My beautiful bride, Monica, is the real driving force behind all our charitable work. We have a little office in the house from which she operates our foundation. She's like the showrunner, and I'm the studio. In other rooms of the house, she's like the studio, and I'm like the out-of-work actor. <laughs> so I'm sharing this with her. Actually, I'm giving it to Monica. Not just because I'm looking to upgrade my marital status, but because she truly deserves it. Nobody I've ever met is as generous, compassionate, or loving to other people. <laughs> Monica, would you like to stand up and wave queerly to the people? Monica, look how pretty. And this is an honor to receive the Valentine Davies Award. We, birth, we both heard the news and said, who's that? <laughs> and I didn't, know, I didn't know what Brad just told us. So I, I, I looked up Valentine Davies on the internet, and, and the first thing that comes up is something on the Smoking Gun website. Valentine Davies is a 38-year-old woman residing in Tampa, Florida. She pleaded guilty last month to a federal felony charge for illegally administering silicone buttocks injections to clients. <laughs> the substance she used was actually intended for metal or plastic lubrication as an additive for paint and coatings and furniture or automotive, automotive polishes. This treatment actually caused several posteriors to, quote, rupture or explode. So I'd like to thank the Writers Guild. <laughs> I've always tried to achieve similar results through my work. <laughs> Just like Tony and Tommy. <laughs> and I wouldn't, have an, I wouldn't have had any of the kind of work we all enjoy had I not had the opportunities afforded me in public school theater, music, a well-rounded education in the arts. Yes, Monica and I support a kind of magical oasis downtown called Inner City Arts, which is a destination for students and teachers who've had their school's programs, theater, music, dance, arts and crafts, cut by a previous administration. What those geniuses and others who still love, live among us who see the arts as superfluous and unnecessary, what they don't realize is it's the answer. In fact, it's been proven that kids who have an arts education do better in math and science. Oh, well, of course they do, it's mind expanding. And for me, the school plays were the only reason to go to school other than Jody Sapoznik. I didn't know Monica then, who is much better and looser. <laughs> Still a little looseness left. <laughs> and now, gratitude. Gratitude, a feeling led by the example of my parents and my wife and the great honorees who come before me that if you're lucky enough to do well in life, you help those around you. It's part of being a human being. It's the best part. It's not an obligation or charity. If you have your share, right? Hey, this cookie's delicious. Have a bite. I don't understand how this idea of sharing became a, a political issue, but it has to idiots for the rest of us, specifically, we live in a town where every single person owes their livelihood to, the arts to their arts education. You don't go into movies, TV, or theater without that appreciation. So it isn't our duty. It's good common sense, even, to invest back into the community that provides for future generations of artists and like-minded people. 
If not, this is, could all go away, and I might have to work for a living. And then we won't get to have the five-hour dinner and award show and have our posteriors explode. <laughs> so thanks to all of you in this room who've taught me so much to my moniker, and many thanks to the WGA West, not the East, those assholes. <laughs> and the real Valentine, thank you.